to start tonight. Um, call the meeting to order officially at 6.37. And just a few housekeeping items. There's a side table over here with some materials. There's sign-in sheets. Um, we'd like it if you gave us your contact information so we could keep you informed about future meetings and events. Um, Kathy will be assisting tonight with taking the minutes for the meeting. And um, we do have something a little bit different tonight. Um, we had some interest in actually live streaming our meeting on Facebook. So David Gonzalez, who's an SNC board member, has offered to help um, record the meeting tonight. I don't know that we're actually going to be live. We might be taped and then um, put on Facebook later. But just if you have an issue with that, just let, you know, raise your hand. Um, but Basically, the camera's going to be this way, um, so hopefully that's something that will be helpful for our stakeholders that are not here with us tonight. Great. Thank you. So with that, Linda, um, Linda Williford, our representative from Oak Ridge, if you want to properly welcome us to your facility. Good evening to you all, and welcome again to Oak Ridge. We're really pleased to have you here for the this important meeting, and thanks to our uh, guests also. Welcome. And uh, if those of you are not familiar with the facility or new the facility, the uh, restrooms are through the main auditorium to your right down the lobby, halfway down that main hall to your right. So that being done, I'll turn the meeting over to you, Thank you, my Thank, thank you, Linda. And thank you again for opening this hospitality and us. Um, item number three, and roll call of the committee. Um, Diane Valencia, I'm here. Tom Weisbart. Here. Uh, Barty Bernard. Here. And Kathy Gruber. <coughs> Robin Farrow is absent tonight. So we have four. Item number four, appointment and or removal by committee chair of committee <coughs> members. I'm going to suggest that we skip that item this evening. Um, I, we're a committee of five at present. Um, Robin's absent, so we're at a quarter of three. Okay. Uh, public comment is number five, and this is where if you have a comment or question on anything that's not on the agenda, um, you, this would be the time to either raise your hand. We also have comment cards in the back if you're shy and you don't want to raise your hand for whatever reason, you can just pass those comment cards up to us. Um, but any, anything that's not on the agenda within the subject matter jurisdiction of our committee. Do we have anything? No. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, what about uh, street sweeping? We only see it um, like down in Encino, you know, it's every day that you just musical chairs for their cars, moving them around for street sweeping. The rest of the valley gets virtually none. So I'm going to make a suggestion. Um, our next item is our public officials, and we're lucky here tonight to have Anne Marie from Councilwoman Rodriguez's office, and I think she can probably help address that issue. Good. So we'll just defer it just a, just a moment. Thank you. And any other questions, feel free to talk to Okay, perfect. Good. Anyone else? Okay, so with that, we'll move on to item number six, and um, Alvin Arzu, I don't believe is here yet, so what we'll do, I think, at this point is introduce um, Officer Keith Crawford, um, our slow for part of Silmar. Am I recording over there? You can report kind of over <laughs> here. If we did bring oh, we a, um, we did bring in, a, get a measle and some uh, materials for you. I want to get after. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> did you work long and hard to get that? Yeah. Van Van right City right Hall parking. Right. Okay. How are you, everyone? Good to see you. Um, thank you. My pleasure. Um, for those of you who don't know me, think funny. Uh, I'm a senior lead officer for the uh, east side of Silmar, Glen Oaks, over to the east. Um, my partner, who many of you know, Alex Heron. Uh, promoted to detective. So uh, he's no longer a senior lead officer. In fact, he's already at North Hollywood as a detective. So uh, right now, the uh, western part of Silmar from going up to the west is, sits vacant, but uh, hopefully we'll get that filled pretty soon. But starting next deployment period, they are going to start having uh, officers. However long it takes them to get that permanently filled, uh, they're going to have uh, officers um, 
permanently, or I'm sorry, temporarily filling that spot. So you'll uh, essentially have a, a, a senior lead officer temporarily until it's, until it's filled. So with that being said, uh, I think I put on your uh, on the tables the crime maps, the most recent crime map. If you look up here for 19 Adam 1, which again was Officer Hiron's area. Um, sorry, I actually ran out of mine, but this is for um, basic car area of 19 Adam 1. Um, the whole lot of numbers and dots on here, but the most important uh, thing to look at, if you look up top, uh, year-to-date stats, crime is down, again, on the western side of Silmar, 32.5%. So it's, uh, it's uh, relatively speaking, it's a good year compared to last year. You have uh, 148 less Part 1 crimes than from last year. And then, for those of you who live on the uh, east side of Glen Oaks, which is my area, uh, basic car area 19 Adam 7, uh, we have a uh, negative 13.3% change. So we have crime is essentially down 13% in that area from last year. So uh, obviously both areas are doing well compared to the numbers last year. Um, so we've got that going for us. Um, trying to think, if there's anyone that has anything that uh, off the top of your head you want to ask, or just feel free to jump in and raise your hand because I'll a few things I kind of wanted to uh, mention. Or the uh, the RV parking, which I've or the RV dwelling, I've spoken to some of you over the phone and emails, and so we're still uh, dealing with that situation. I um, um, obviously I need a legal reason to impound these RVs if if they become a problem, and uh, I know there was one on all of you a detached trailer a few weeks ago that I, I had to impound. It had been registered in ten years or more. Um, I was getting a lot of complaints on that. And then there were two on the move to all of you that some of you may have seen on Foothill for a long time and have since moved back to Foothill. And I spoke to that individual, one of them today, and uh, we had a uh, pretty uh, a good conversation. So he, he, he might be moving on. Um, he's, a, he's aware of the complaints and he has some complaints of his own. So obviously, um, they're in a, he's in a, they're in a situation they don't want to be in, so we got to be mindful of that. But, um, but we're, we're, we're still, um, you know, uh, addressing that situation. Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, I want to commend you for the work you've done with the RVs on Foothill Boulevard. Thank you. <laughs> I drive at Bailey between Yarnell mm -hmm. and, uh, well, actually Balboa and Yarnell. And uh, several months ago, I counted about 14 RVs. And tonight, on my way here, I counted one. Yeah. And a big difference. Uh, there was also an article in the Los Angeles Times the other day about RVs, and uh, you had mentioned before that uh, it's difficult now taking them to the junkyards mm -hmm. because they uh, they don't have space for them. But what they're doing is they're turning around and renting them mm -hmm. back that. to so-called homeless people. Mm -hmm. It's just adding to the problem. And yeah, that, they're going to uh, they're going to actually uh, stop this. From what I understand, who is renting them? The uh, demolition or junkyards. Well, basically, what what I have actually seen this um, with my own eyes, so to speak. I know sometimes they sell them at auction, or I, I can't speak for the, uh, the impound yards or how it works, but obviously sometimes the uh, an RV gets sold back to whoever wants to buy it. And uh, I have seen situations where an individual buys it, drives it to a curb somewhere, to the boulevard, or if it doesn't even run, they'll have it towed, and they will rent it out to someone. So that I have seen that. So that's not just a rumor. Um, spe uh, speaking on though, you were talking about closer to Yarnell. That was in A One's area, which was Alex's area. Um, but as a lot of you who knew um, Alex or, or myself and knew how we operated. Alex and I rolled together like a two-man unit. Because typically, really, we don't have partners. But Alex and I, since we're up here in Silmar and battling the same problems, we worked well with each other. We kind of operated as partners, and so we would bounce back and forth all day when we worked together from one corner of Silmar to the other. So that was his side. But I knew of his problems. He knew of my problems. Because my biggest issue with the RVs was on Foothill, closer to Cobalt, where Foothill starts to curve around. I also had probably more than a dozen. And uh, so I don't think there's any over there now. I have, and again, I, I always thought this, this disclaimer because I think it's important. I, I think we all agree it's unfortunate, you know, that some people, some of these people have to live in those circumstances. 
but again, there there are circumstances with these RVs where it's just um, it's not sanitary and, and, and things of that nature. So it's something that we do have to address sometimes. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about what was just said about these these homes, these motorhomes or RVs being sold. That's a seizure. They can't just do that. I'm suspecting that then when they are towed, that these people don't have title to these. A lot of so they don't own them, and that's the only correct. reason why. Correct. A lot of a lot of these RVs out there, there is no paperwork. Right. You know, right. If, if there is someone, there, a lot of them are abandoned. So I never even see the individual okay. who is oh, there or whatever. So a certain amount of time goes by, and then they. And then sure, they but there are situations where there's an individual, sorry, individual in there, and it's registered to someone they don't even know because it hasn't been registered in 15 right, years. Of course, right. um, and again, I have to have a legal reason to impound it. But once you know I, that threshold is met, we. Uh, and I am pound it, um, it can be obviously sold at auction. Is it registration, legal reason to tow them? Anything, any vehicle in the state of California that hasn't been registered in more than six months can be, can be impounded, whether it's a, a motorcycle, car, RV, or whatever. Yeah. So again, some of the some impounds I do is just because of that, because they haven't been registered in so long. Right. No, they, they auction anything after like six months or something. If, if you don't pull it out after a certain amount of time, they auction it to try and recover the storage, sure. don't they? Yeah. You know, that's... Well, that wasn't what it sounded like in the article. Oh, yeah, no. And the problem is they have to sit them. They have to sit on them and sure. watch them for six months while they Probably track not bugs. They're not even roadworthy most of them. I don't know. Yes, sir? You mentioned that the crime was down from last year. Mm -hmm. And did that happen by accident, or can you uh, see what caused that, or what? No, I like to generally take credit myself for that. <laughs> 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 um, honestly, I, it's it's just a, a, an effort from you know um, our patrol, you know, patrol. Because uh, if you look on here again, sorry, there's a whole lot of numbers and, and things going on in this page. Um, you have 346. There's uh, arrests are down, but in my area, I'm sorry, crimes down, but arrests are up 10 percent. And in A1's area, the west side, um, what do you have here? Arrests are actually down 15 percent, but crime is also down. Whereas my area, crime is down, but arrests are up. I mean, sometimes I try to make sense out of the numbers, and it's almost kind of, you know pointless. But I mean, we are out there. You you have officers out there who, when they're not chasing the radio calls, um, they're out there doing proactive police work, and then uh, myself and uh, Officer Caron, when he was, you know, still out here as a senior officer, we, we pay attention to these to these numbers and these dots, and we know where the problem areas are, and we try to focus in on that, so I think really it's just a group effort. And how can residents assist? Um, by calling me, emailing me, um, letting me know, you know, these, these quality of life issues, because a lot of the things that we deal with a senior lead officer, of course, whether it be uh, an abandoned vehicle or, you know, uh, a problematic neighbor in the, in the middle of a neighborhood or things like that just seem small, um, oftentimes breed larger problems. So just getting involved, you know, knowing, you know, you, you know a problem when you see it. Um, just let your, let your senior lead officer know and we can kind of focus on that. Uh, something that's, I think, always confusing for everybody regarding these crime stats is that they do not comport with the penal code or the changes in Part 47 or anything like that. So when, when this, these stats call, call them Part 1 crimes or burglaries, for example, mm -hmm. burglaries have been redesignated under the penal code. Um, there, things are now shoplifting when it's commercial and things like that. So, there's a, so I, it, this, to me, doesn't really match um, what we consider, um, or what the penal code considers, certain certain crimes. Would you Would you agree that the they, way, don't, they don't actually match? I hope I don't mis I hope I don't misspeak here, but the way I understand how this works, um, the FBI, of course, um, define what a, a burglary is, or what a, a, a grand theft auto is, and whatnot. So again, I hope I'm not misspeaking here, but we go by what uh, these part one crimes. Um, what a true burglary is. So if you look on here, and of course the, the legend is over here, the circle, B-U-R-G, of course for burglary, if you see a, uh, a circle on the map, that's where a residential or commercial burglary occurred. Residential or commercial, okay. Yeah. Now, a, a burglary from a motor vehicle sure. is designated differently. That's going to be a diamond. Sure. And over here, B-T-F-V stands for burglary or theft from vehicle. No, so they're, they're pretty accurate. Yeah. It's all standardized. Yes. 
I, I, I always try to look at the ratio, the, the net balance on stolen cars, and I don't see any recoveries shown here. Are we gaining or losing cars? It, it, it kind of gives you an idea if they're stealing them to get out of town. Yeah, the, the recoveries. Are bringing them here and dumping them? Or? Recoveries are not on here. This is just okay. where the crimes were committed. Do you, do you happen to know where we're at? Do we have a net increase or decrease? I don't, but I can find out. Because these are the two maps that show part one crimes. Of course, we have about a million different maps that show, you know, um, I can find out how many car break-ins happened in that one little area. Of course, you know, we have a good team yeah. that, that does that. But there, we do have maps that show the recoveries, and I don't know that off the top of my head, but it's, you know, if you're curious, it's... It's uh, something we can certainly find out. I know we, we've gone through times where we, we've got a net increase, where we're gaining cars. They're, they're dumping more cars here than they're taking. Yeah, like I said, they break down everything. It's very, uh, um, they're very conscious about the stats and whatnot. They'll, they'll have a map where they can say, okay, these, these are not where the crimes are committed, but these are where we found the vehicles that were stolen, and they'll, they'll differentiate between the ones that were stolen here versus Devonshire Division versus an outside agency. Obviously, we'll have some that are stolen from Santa Clarita, which is sheriff, uh, sheriff jurisdiction. So, um, but yeah, I don't know those numbers off the top of my head. How much longer do we have? Just I just my goal. Okay. Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, are you uh, going to be shy from next door? We'd like to hear from you on next door. All your little things, or are you just waiting for a big case to come? <laughs> <laughs> I a big get, arrest that made them sensational. I got a, my apologies. I got a little busy. I, I do go spurs where I do more posting on yeah. next door. But they really love it. A, so are I, you, I will get more active on social media. Thank you for that. <laughs> is everyone on next door on the, the social media? Everybody yeah. is here. It's, it's a pretty good tool. Um, as they've been just and just as a reminder, I was actually telling writing someone to send an email today. I'm a, I guess considered an, an administrator. So I can post things, and I can choose the neighborhoods or that I that I can you know um, select select to, to get the view of my post. So I have to go on and you know with the mouse and pick every single neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, what I cannot see though is because I don't belong. I don't live in your neighborhood or in your neighborhood. I don't see everyone's posts. So I don't see. You can private message me, kind of like an, uh, an email, of course. Um, you can. You can find me that way and email me. But if you're posting something, just a general, like, hey, all my neighbors, my car got broken into, just thought you should know too, Officer Crawford. I'm not seeing that. So that's just the way next was set up, because I'm the administrator. I'm not in that neighborhood. But of course, email me on my department email or private message me and or call me. Do you read the replies when you post? On your post, a lot of people reply. Do you read those? Yes, um, and, but then obviously sometimes the reply may occur like, a week or two later, you someone's yeah missed the boat. So uh, um, some of those I might miss, but generally speaking, I do good ones and the bad ones. Anybody else have anything? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. So I'm brand new here. What is next door? Next door uh, <laughs> is a social media website or uh, an app on your phone if you have a smartphone. Um, I don't know what. what who can explain it better than I can? It's a, it's an app. It's like um neighborhood watch online on the internet. So or community billboard. Yeah. Community billboard. billboard. There you go. So I I truly believe it's a good uh, it's a good app to use to get to know your neighbors. Uh, just to give you an example, um, you have to verify your address, and then so now you're part of this community, the people that live around you. So you don't have the people who are living over in Northridge trying to, you know, spy on what you're posting and you know what I mean? You have to actually, so it verifies you're in that community. And then you can do anything from talk about crime and safety, like, hey, just want everyone to know my uh, car got broken into last night, be on the lookout. Or, um, hey, I lost my dog, here's a picture of my dog, can you help me find my dog? Or, I need a, I need a good plumber, does anybody have a plumber they can recommend? So it's a really great way to get to know your neighbors and help your neighbors out. But what we found early on in well, law enforcement across the whole country is it's a good way for law enforcement to reach out. Okay, so then we'll go on there and I may say, hey, everyone in this neighborhood, um, we're having a rash of car break-in, so be mindful, lock your car, don't leave anything valuable in there. Or <clears throat> something as simple as a community event coming up next month, coffee with uh, your, you know, with your senior lead officer or captain on Thursday, come join us for a cup of coffee. So. It's, it's a great way for the community to kind of get involved with each other. Thank you. Next door, you got it. 
I don't want to take up too much time, and I think I got everyone because we have some other very important people over here who would like to, to speak to you all as well. So, uh, anyone have anything, anything else for me? Has this gotten started? This community uh, patrol? I believe it has. It is. Um, if you want more information on that, our uh, community relations officer, well, I can talk to me later and I can get you more info on it, but I believe that has. So I'll step aside and we'll let some of our other MPs here speak. Thank you all. <laughs> Everyone, so I can get up. Uh, it's my first public safety committee meeting. I got invited by Diane, so I, I will become a regular, obviously. <laughs> um, as you do, if you don't know, I am the new Silmar Field Deputy. Um, before it was Franklin Ochoa, um, as some of you might know, he's moved on to assembly member, and we're proud of him for going on. We're still working closely with him as well, but now I'll be taking over Silmar. And it's I'm just finishing up my fourth week, so first month of here. Um, the transition has honestly been really amazing. I loved coming in here already and seeing like 10 familiar faces and just being like, hey, 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 <laughs> like, and just getting back to everyone. And it's made it easier because I only have so many eyes and I feel like all of you are my eyes. And the fact that I get regular emails with photos, with solutions, with commentary, and sometimes it might be repeats, but I'm so familiar with it that, you know, I drive by Foothill and I already know like, what's going on that one. I know and pretty much everything because of you, and I really want to say that I appreciate that a lot. It's made it really easy, and um, I really look forward to working with you. It's not just public safety, it's everything. I'm going to put a focus on that over here, so feel free to ask me anything. And I look forward to working with everyone. It's been great, and I'm you know, growing with the community. I love it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and um, this gentleman had a question, actually, that maybe oh, you yeah, might be able to help with. Yeah. Um, so we do have contact with our city department, so we are really close to sanitation. It is something that we can get sweeping for. What I've known in the past is that if your street doesn't get sweeping, you need to get at least 75% of support from your neighborhood with a petition to support. If you want the street, the street sweeping there, it is something that's possible. Yeah, we were on Balboa the other day, and a week ago, Monday, well, we took a week, week and a half ago on Monday, there was an accident, and we're cyclists, so we see the crap on the road, and you want us to stay in the bike lane, well, guess what, it's loaded with glass, and I yeah. can't stay in the bike lane. Yeah. There was an accident um, north of Cessna, right there by Timber Ridge, and we, we rode that on Sunday, and the whole thing is still loaded with glass. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, if a car is towed, why can't it, because the guys are picking up, sweep it. Yeah. You know, sweep it to the curb. Yeah. You know, and I've had it some reports already on, I know there was one day where, gosh, there was just a bag of trash that's just blown off throughout the pathway. I called graffiti busters, thank God for them. <laughs> they came out and they cleaned it the day I reported it, you know. I is that love a it. separate entity? Or it is, but we work very closely with them and, you know, they're focused just on Silver, so I really love working with them. And I've seen them out. Yeah, and they're willing to do all that loose trash debris and stuff. Um, really, whenever you see these things, feel free to call me. And I mean, if it's not them, we can get them out faster. I, I, don't, I didn't even know that that was a thing. But yeah, well, good. Like I, say, I saw the accident um, yeah. right after it happened. Um, I came home that way, and then we rode that on Sunday, and the glass was still not over in the bike lane, all the way over to the side, and even the little barrier they had loaded yeah. with, with glass. Yeah, and it's in the bike lane, like you're saying. Yeah, oh, and, and then coming up foothill, too, it, there's glass all over the place. I see bumpers all on the freeway. That, that was something I wanted to bring up, bumpers. And I think we all see it, bumpers on the freeway after an accident. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think if you can identify whose bumper that is, they need to get a citation from the state or something for for litter. Litter on the freeway, litter on the street. If you can identify whose bumper that is, that should either be picked up and put in the car or the tow truck should be picking it up. I don't think the bumper should be left hanging around, especially when you can start identifying who it belongs to. Okay. Anyone else? Or Anne Marie? No. Okay. Thank you. No, you know, um, well, so let's do this. Um, uh, is there an objection if we go back to um, public comment for Ricardo? Um, okay, I 
I have a projection. Just a brief. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Ricardo Benitez. I'm a stakeholder at the Simo, and I'm candidate for the State Assembly. And my priority is public safety. I remember uh, sale fire when this place was on fire, evacuating everybody from the Simo and the Council. I was uh, two terms a uh, member of the uh, Simon Neville Council, so I was into that and I come over here now, I see it's so, so beautiful. So, uh, but I still living in the community, I am still running for a state assembly, and I expect new support. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my name is Ricardo Benito. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Thank you. So, now, we've got Alvin. Alvin Arzu, um, come come on up, don't hide in the corner. <laughs> and um, so Alvin Arzu, Deputy City Attorney, Neighborhood Prosecutor for LAPD Mission Division. And you were not here for my legal disclaimer, so okay. we'll appreciate this. So we are doing something new tonight. It's our first attempt at Facebook Live. Oh, wow. So just the disclaimer <laughs> <laughs> on camera. <laughs> I usually try to. Um, okay. 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 No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> like, oh, you didn't do that. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I really take appreciate you all being here. Uh, I was a little late today. I was downtown. So I just finished. I left downtown at about 5.15. So I know it's going to be a little late, but I was able to make it before the 30 minutes like I thought I would. Um, uh, for public safety in Silmar, I like, you know, one of the things I like to talk about is sort of the, the hot topics of the day for us, and they've been pretty consistent for the last year. Uh, one being uh, street racing, one being homelessness, one being RVs, uh, one being vacant lot issues, um, and sort of the combination of those issues and how it relates to the city. I'll tell you one thing that um, the issues with regards to RVs and homelessness is a struggle for the city right now. Um, but I think with Officer Crawford's help and Officer Gnome that was here before, as well as the council office, we really focused on trying to identify hot spots and preventing people from continuing to go there uh, via a variety of ways. One being uh, trying to get outreach to those locations. Second being um, enforcement. Uh, the second one being enforcement uh, with RVs, the littering in and around RVs. Dr. Crawford done a great job of that. Um, leaking sewage from RVs, um, individuals being um, cited for that. Uh, unregistered RVs or RVs whose registration is expired, those RVs have been uh, towed as much as possible. Um, right around uh, Foothill, uh, it's been our struggle because it is a location that does allow RVs to be there. Um, the issue becomes, um, are they staying there too long overnight, um, past overnight, and what's being done? Officer Crawford's done a great job of citing the individuals there. My struggle with regards to the RVs is that um, to sleep in the RVs is not necessarily illegal, but when the RVs are told, the individuals find their way back to the location or around somewhere. And the struggle we have is being able to identify the individuals and then finding them housing. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I probably prosecuted um, good, over 20, 30, 40 cases of uh, individuals who might be transients or who are transients and get them stay away orders from different locations. Um, but my struggle is that they remain. Um, and so uh, with Officer Crawford, we get a list together and we identify who shouldn't be in certain locations and we encourage them to leave if not they are violated, their probation is violated. Um, with the street racing, I will tell you that the city and LAPD and CHP have put together a task force that the city attorney's office is focused on uh, bringing cases against individuals who have these cars that are uh, adjusted so that they can go faster and are louder. Um, and there was at least four cases from what I was told that was presented to the prosecutor from the San Fernando branch, North Valley, we call it, um, for filing that took place yesterday. So um, that is something that the city is working on and the city attorney's office is working on as well. Um, I know there's a variety of issues. Uh, we spoke, I, was, I received an email about Wheeler and Hubbard. We went by there today. Uh, took a few pictures of the location. I know um, the lot is pretty vacant. I saw a little hole in the gate. They have the no trespassing signs, which is very helpful. Um, 
so if an individual is found there, um, usually they could be, they will be cited if an officer is present and does catch a person there. Um, but I understand the struggle because it's been that way after they knock down a property on that lot. We're hopeful that in some way that they can build something that's actually productive so that people can use it. And right now, Officer Crawford and I are going to work with the owner to try and identify what his plan is for the location. That's kind of what our, our goal is, to sort of work with the uh, individual to be a better citizen, a better neighbor to everyone there. Um, so I took some pictures today, and we're sort of at the ground floor of working on uh, a project of, of getting that location up to a better standard. That's kind of the long and short of it. Uh, I know we had a national night out and folks came out um, and represented. It was, it was great for the Mission Division. You know, Mission Division being about 20, almost 25 square miles, a variety of issues in different locations. Um, so it, work, it works out. So uh, I appreciate you all. I know I'm going to be staying for questions. Um, you guys can ask me questions now, or we can wait for another time and ask me questions. But I'm more than willing to stay and answer whatever let me let me just um, say I, I had a uh, Tom pull up some of our sheets and we've got them up around the room. These were our polling or voting sheets from our public safety town hall that we had in April, okay. where basically we allowed our community members to give us input on you know what was bugging them, what what were the issues that they found most troublesome in the community that were related to public safety. So um, you know you'll see by the the voting. You know, from the top down, um, encampments and vehicle dwelling, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. is, is at the top of the list. But mm -hmm. there's a whole list of other things, and street racing uh, and street, yeah. you know, all kinds yeah. of stuff. So, um, but yeah, we look forward to working with you on those. <laughs> Penny. Yes. Um, Mr. Arzu, I'm curious, there was a story in the paper uh, yesterday about a survey by the LAPD along with the city attorney's office about 90% of the vagrant offenders, the homeless offenders, after having been cited for jaywalking, urinating in public, what is sleeping on the sidewalk, had failed to appear in court. And I guess the police chief was telling the commission that this sort of a cycle of sort of meaningless, you know, loop of uh, failure of citation, failure to appear, um, is citation is right, but I'm not sure, failure to appear, warrant, on and on and on and on. And, on. and I'm curious what your reaction is, and not only what you think about this survey, how accurate it might be from your opinion, but what would be the solution to this? It, it is a struggle. It is a struggle. Uh, the survey, I think, is somewhat accurate. It may not be down to the number, but it is a struggle because of individuals who are cited for um, offenses that are consistent with being uh, maybe a transit or a person who doesn't have a location where if you send a notification of a citation um, uh, or notification of a criminal case or filing, they never get to it. Or if they do, um, they ignore it. Um, it's sort of the struggle of the, the climate we're in now because misdemeanors and citations uh, of misdemeanors are such that uh, people are cited out. If they're arrested for a misdemeanor, there are times where uh, the individual is released from custody uh, because the jails are very are overcrowded. And so the jail space is reserved for individuals who have uh, maybe higher level crimes um, that person should remain in versus a person who would be cited for a trespass. Uh, I find that there are times where I file cases, a lot of the cases I do file, um, there are citations uh, that result in um, police reports being sent to me. I decide I'm going to file the case. It's presented. It's supposed to be in court on a certain day and the individual doesn't show up. So it goes to a warrant. And with those warrants, the court then says this person failed to appear. They're required to do so, a warrant is issued, and then uh, that the execution of the warrant is then reserved for law enforcement to go and uh, complete. Now, law enforcement, if an individual uh, gave Officer Crawford an address that was his mother's address, but he only goes there once in a while, there's a chance that he won't uh, go to court on that day, um, and that you know he may be out and about doing what he wanted to do uh, prior to that, and may it be, it, you know, whatever vices he has or whatever concerns that person has. So um, it is a problem. Um, it is a concern. But I think the system we have is the best that we can do besides, you know, uh, following the guide or putting a tracking device on it. 
Uh, you said a few minutes ago that you had prosecuted 40 cases. I don't know what, over what period of time. Over the last year and a half. Oh, were they actual prosecutions, or did you have failures to appear on those two? Uh, there were prosecutions that were oh. completed. I do have cases that um, are failure to appear. So I filed more than 40 cases over the last year. Um, so um, a percentage of the cases that I did file did go to warrant. Um, and what percentage but I, would you say? I haven't gauged it or counted it, but I would say, I give you like around maybe about 20, 20%. I would tell you that within Silmar, the Mission Division is pretty um, active, the officers, so that usually individuals who have warrants, it doesn't, they're not, if they're around the area, they'll get picked up pretty quickly. They do get picked up very quickly. Um, so, yeah, I have to commend the Mission Division. I've been in other, other divisions as well. I worked at the Southwest Division which is by USC, um, and it's, it's a different dynamic. So um, I'm appreciative of where I am. And you guys should be um, appreciative as well, because Officer Crawford, Officer Benoni, the officers for Mission Division are pretty committed to you know, working with you. Uh, sometimes that's a struggle, um, having this collaborative sort of uh, unit working with you. I have a question. Mm -hmm. A lot of these homeless are there any care for mental health in some of them? That, a lot yeah. of them do need, I think, men. Absolutely. Absolutely. I struggle with that as well because uh, there is mental health, health, mental health, health. Uh, but uh, I think the struggle is getting the individual who has those struggles to take the help. That's right. Right? It, it, it's the compelling them to say, well, you're at, a, you're at a place in your life where you need to have, you need help. Um, the 72-hour hold, they're individuals that are deemed to be a threat to themselves and to the community. They have a 72-hour hold that um, uh, the, the city and the county can hold an individual. But after that, the person must be released once they can care for themselves. And the medication that they need to take, um, they're not compelled to take. Right? So because not, people aren't following them around and making them take it. Um, and so that, that is true. That is a struggle. Uh, the MEU unit, the LAPD has a mental... Um, evaluation unit that goes around and does evaluate individuals who may be homeless, who may be deemed or thought to be uh, in need of help, and they come and evaluate those individuals, um, but they can't compel them to take services. And, and you know, that's a long-standing issue in California after uh, Governor Reagan, President Reagan, yeah. um, you know, of the, there's a, I guess, let them free from the mental health facility. So let me take, um, Tom, Tom had his hand up. We, I, I brought this up at the CPAP meeting because we had exactly the same sort of situation there last month in, in the Public Safety Committee. We, we voted to draft a letter uh, with the following bullet points. One, to request to dramatically increase the penalties for possessing or igniting illegal fireworks. And two, to request to increase fines substantially for anyone found to be selling over a certain threshold, and that, that actually was selling or possessing a large quantity. Um, what happened, and, and I think we got, 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 got excited when we heard that a guy with, I think, 1,200 pieces, uh, that mission officers arrested him, coincidentally, right near my house, up by the mountains by Veterans Park, 1,200 pieces of fireworks, invested the time to take him down to Van Nuys and book him, and he pulled out $25 and bailed himself out. And, yeah, so we, we kind of got excited by that, and, and, and we need to increase the penalties. So then I, I, when I started to write this letter, which was my assignment, I found that they're actually state laws, they're not city laws. So writing to our, our, our city council member uh, may not have any effect. They may not have anything they can do with it. So my question is, last year, 2017, Mission uh, made their first big push on fireworks. Went out and arrested 35 people, actually arrested 35 people. Most of them were probably cited and released. Um, and some of them, a number of them were for sale. They were Craigslist vendors. What penalties were actually handed down on those? Most of those should have gone through. So what are the penalties that people are actually getting? Do we really have a problem with penalties? Do they need to be increased? And, and if so, 
what can our city council do or do we need to go to the state level? Is there, you know, so what, what, what's happening with these people and, and if it needs to be changed, where, at what level does it have to be changed? Deep question, pretty layered. Um, I can tell you that I, I don't have the stats for all of, <laughs> I don't have the stats for everyone. I've had a month to think about this. And I, and, I appreciate, <laughs> and I appreciate you crafting it very effectively. I, I'll only speak to some of the cases that I had. I had a variety, I, I, I think I had about five cases that, that I reviewed and filed. Um, I had uh, one case where an individual was lighting a firecracker and that person was cited and given a fine and the fine was probably close to between five hundred and a thousand dollars. And then I had another one where the person ended up Is that one? $1,000. Before all the add-ons? Uh, Does that 1000 yes. become 3000 Well, I mean, I, I don't see how, I didn't see the receipt. Okay. So I, I, didn't, I didn't see the bill, but I'll tell you that there was, there was some money that they didn't have to pay. And okay. There's another one where there was probation that, was, that I requested and the person ended up on probation. Yeah. Um, so it varies. Uh, I have to tell you that it's no one, one all be all sort of way, remedy of doing it. The, the latitude for prosecutors to evaluate the information that's presented to the prosecutor and to craft um, a uh, disposition that's fair as well as in accordance with the law. So um, each person, each situation varies. The fines and the law allows for that leeway um, and so it does work. It just depends on on the circumstances. You know, if I don't know if you want to treat someone who has the fireworks that they got from a cousin and fire lit it up the same way you treat a guy who sells fireworks across the county. So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not it's not it's not a one all be all, and, a, and the discretion of the, it's the discretion of the prosecutor's office to file cases that they. Did you, did you have any involvement in any of the ones that came off of Craigslist? Yeah. And and uh, what were what were they? How did they? Uh, that was the one that ended up in probation. Probation. Oh. Mm -hmm. Three years probation, fines, um, and... How much were the fines? From last year, I couldn't tell you exactly what they were. A thousand. Yeah, but, I mean, to be honest with you, when you go to court and... and if you go to court and you're on probation, the fines are going to be less than 500 bucks. Because just going be in there, just going in there, that's, oh, that's you know, going to need that. Okay, and, and if we wanted to increase the penalties, if we wanted to see, for example, a guy with 1,200 pieces, okay, if we wanted to see that treated as it used to be with, with drugs, and I think the <coughs> captain made a comment to me, it used to be if you had over an ounce of marijuana, and this, this is a long time ago, <laughs> you were presumed to be selling. And there, you know, at some point in fireworks, the same thing should, should kick in. You know, you don't have 1,200 pieces for your backyard party. You're in business, and and we want to see some really serious uh, penalties. You, you have to. Is that that's, state that's level? That's state level. That's not. So there's level. nothing city council can do with this. City council has the leeway to do um, what they like. If, if, if they prioritize that, um, I don't get involved with that. That's what above my pay grade and my my latitude. I actually just follow the laws that are presented, um, and so. That's the realm that I live in. Um, I would say that the, what you could do, um, if, if that's a problem, is you could draft that letter. You could send it to your, your, your council person, and then that's something that maybe moved up the chain to changing you know, the LAMC. But I'll tell you, the city attorney's office would be the one that writes it. Um, but it would be at the behest of the city council. So LAMC could supersede the, the state law? If it's within, I don't know why supersede, I just says. It's a law that the prosecutor can take into consideration when considering what laws can be uh, applied to the file. Okay, so, so I will tell you this, Tom. If you wanted the fine to be a hundred thousand dollars, well, I'm not, I'm not the crime for, doesn't match. You know what I mean? You can't. No, I'm not, I'm not looking yeah. for that, and I don't think anyone is. But I think that that when the officers go out and do their job. Um, there should be some, some, some serious consequences. And I'm not worried about the guy who got it from his cousin and has you know, a pocket full of firecrackers. I'm worried about the guy, I, you know, you, we can't go out and arrest them anyway. The officers don't have the time or the energy or the resources to do it. However, 
if they can start shutting down the flow by going after the distributors, then the guy with 1,200 pieces, the guy that's got his name and number out there on Facebook, where, where Vice is having to go out and go jump through hoops because the guy is demanding to see $2,000 up front and they don't have two grand, they got to go find it, which was one of their problems. Um, when they go through all of that, and, and they arrest him, and he's got a room full of fireworks that could have taken out half his block, okay, because he was smoking a joint. Um, the guy should do some serious time. Okay. All right, Ricardo, did yeah. you have something? Yes. Um, you said that uh, you are giving citations to those homelessness. I didn't say that. Oh, oh I do give a sign to the homeless to uh, urinate and put, why instead of doing that, why you don't put those horrible toilets so they can use? And did you sign George Lopez by urinating in Hollywood Boulevard in public? So are those kind of things is that, you know, we would like to hear about those people who uh, do it in purpose, homeless, you know, because they are in need, but, Somebody who do something in purpose, those are the guys who need to be locked up or signed up. Yeah. So the other things that you say about Ronald Reagan and the homeless, I mean, for the health, yeah, but that was 40 years ago. Yeah. What the Democrats have been doing, they've been in sovereign power for the last 40 years, and what Donald, I mean, Ronald Reagan did is written on the stone that they cannot Fix yeah. it in order to put these people in, in good medication and give them the help they need. So I think it's a, a bunch of excuses that, you know, uh, public service is using in order to keep these people like that and not to help in the community to be in better uh, safety in those kind of things. You know, thank, you. Yeah. Th thank you, Ricardo. Uh, Bonnie. I'll keep mine short, but I have three of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, better word. What do you use when you go into court? Transient and homeless. Which one? We've just been using transient. Uh, There's a discussion I'll, I'll on next transient. door about it. You I prefer transient. transient? All right, I'm circling that one. Okay, the next one is the HARP program. What types of community service are you doing? Because I, I particularly like the program. I support that program. But uh, what, what are the things that they can do to to ease off their citations, the homeless get cited, they get into warrants, and so now there's a program Yeah, for we, we have, we bring the homeless to a location um, where you have city attorney employees uh, that go through their record, and if they do a level, a certain amount of community service hours, uh, some of the citations can be He's taken off their you. record, and then uh, it will allow them to maybe get a driver's license, yeah. which will be helpful so that they can uh, begin to get resources, they can, and then they can get housing. Um, and that's sort of the process is sort of to, to clear the deck so that they can be open and, and uh, available to resources uh, so from the city. What kinds of things, that's the, that's the discussion, what kinds of things would they be doing for community service? Would it be like cleaning homes, parks? Homes, shelters? Park? We have shelters, and they would clean up at shelters. The shelters clean up at shelters. Food, uh, you, know, you know, preparing food preparing at shelters, food. serving foods at shelters, uh, going so to locations being, and cleaning up as well. Being with other homeless, yes, so in their environment. So you want them to participate in community service where they're comfortable being in. You wouldn't want them to go. Uh, I don't know. Well, there has to be some level of structure to confirm that the hours are completed and that they're developing a a, a protocol or a system internal system so that they can continue, you know, to develop, uh, uh, how do you say, a, a, a hierarchy of, 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 of how they work, right? This, we all work in a certain structure. We wake up in the morning, we get ready, we shower, we go to work. You know, at work we complete certain tasks. Uh -huh. And so if you develop that or build that structure for those individuals who don't have it or have drifted away from it, we're hopeful that they can develop a a, a uh, system and a sort of uh, an internal work ethic so that they can maintain a sobriety as well as a household, right? Because um, that's really what the, the homeless shelters are focused on when they bring people in is sort of changing their environment so that they can be more productive. And is that, is that 
working. I mean, that's it does work. I mean, I, you've it, seen it, and oh, yes. people have benefited from it, oh, and they're so. no longer out in the streets now. They're moving on a different path, and they're getting into temporary shit. So you've seen it actually work. Yes. So it's a good program. So an individual that was living, uh, it was in Southwest at Lamar Park that uh, was in the that was homeless, living in the park, ended up uh, cleaning himself up in his and then uh, getting a job as, as, as a bus driver and then having his own place. I mean, it, it, there are really there are really positive stories that come from it. It's just those are sometimes far, few and far between, but um, because, you know, recidivism is, is an issue. Um, and so we struggle with that, and the community struggles with that as well. Um, and a lot of the times, the help that's out there, you have to meet them where they're at. And so it takes Again. some time. Last one. You're having the longer answers than me. I have the longer questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give you an example on this one. Motorhome, big motorhome yeah. on Jacks. And it's on a yellow zone. It's parked on a yellow zone 24 7. There's a street sign that says uh, street sweeping, street cleaning, Wednesdays, 10 to 11, or something like that. It's always there. It's always there. It's been for years, always there. Uh, DOT comes. What's done? The the the, the, the yeah, vehicle. They so called uh, Officer Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and he's responded to that. Yeah. Okay, so so the thing is, the department. What I'm hearing in the community through various ways is that the Department of Transportation, the Parking Enforcement comes out, and nothing really happens. Nothing really happens. So so. If we call, or if we go on 311 and we do all the proper things we're told to do, and we get no, we get no satisfaction from it, it's a song. <laughs> but I mean, if we, if nothing's done, and it's obvious nothing's done. It's not helping our officers, it's not helping us. We're doing all the right things. We're not tearing their motor harm apart, we're not vandalizing them, we're trying to be good neighbors. So, so is there a way to get DOT to actually, to, I don't know? Uh, I think that's, is that more for the council office? It would Perhaps be easier for the council office. I just say from my, yes, from my experience, it would probably I mean, take a task force. Yeah, with DOT, they don't look at zones. Really, they look at it as a car, you know, like, they don't go off of the zones from what I've talked to them about. They're citing them for 72 hours, but, I mean, they mark their tires, they move a foot down. This, this thing's like yeah. jacks, it's not moving. It's on jacks. Yeah. And the struggle, not moving. the struggle with And it has been reported. Oh, I don't know. know. Next door, there's probably 3,000. I was talking about it. Uh, <laughs> somebody's got to report it every day. Yeah. I know DOT has, for example, I reported the one on the hill that everyone's going to store right here with the white one. Yeah. I reported them, and they pretty much showed me a whole log of all the time that they've been called for that <laughs> same one, and it, they weren't able to remove it because it just moved down the street or something like that. But in the case of this one, I, I can always search the license plate and see what history they have on it and what has well, been done. Well, this one got actually got hit by another truck, the back of it. I mean, this sucker had pictures of it. Yeah. Went on to the sidewalk and just moved his pickup truck. So he got another one. He got another one and it's parked there. But now, the house is in escrow that I guess his mother has and he's parked around facing the wrong side of the street with the window, with the side panels open so he's going to live in it. And, um, uh, putting cones there as well. And I'm sure that's not even a yellow zone. That's just like the no zone. You cannot be there, no red zone. So do we just call DOT and he's gonna mark his tire and move it a little bit? I mean, that's just, doesn't work. I'll see, see more of the situation. And All right. I, I can send you the whole string with photos from next yeah. door and yeah, make I'll sure that that one that I can. Yeah. Yeah. I take a lot of pictures of it, so. Yeah. All right, thank you. I'm sorry, Alan, you got out of the last one. All right. <laughs> okay. It's on to my case now. <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. And again, I'm new in the area, and I moved in June 26th. I have, these are the first officers I've seen. I've never seen anybody on the streets at all. And so I didn't know if we were uh, supplied by or protected by LAPD or the Sheriff's Department. I see we're on APD. What is the non-emergency number? Because I only have a cell phone. 877-ASK-LAPD. Thank you. Chris. Uh, I My think co-worker. 
think there might be some confusion um, over a lot of the things that were commented on uh, already today. Um, first, Tom, I think what you were asking was, is it an LAMC code or is it a penal code, which is a state <coughs> code, or an LAMC code, which is a city municipal code for fireworks? I'm not sure what you were filing. Did you file LAMC code sections for that? Both, both. Okay, so of course the city council can do something about LAMC code violations, and there are firework violations under the LAMC code. There are. Yes. Yes. Um, can you I, give me a list of the ones you're filing so we can ask that those penalties go up? Yeah. Next. Do you have those, or? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I can get. I can get that. LAMC yes. code. They're, they're, they're there. So please, please know that what happens in court is that there's a base fine for something, and it's about time seven, as you know, um, when, uh, when somebody gets sentenced to a fine um, on any of our misdemeanors in court. At least half the people will go, I, I, I don't have any money, or okay, waive the fines, without any um, proof or anything like that. Even if they go to an ability to pay hearing, with extensions, nails, a cell phone, and everything like that, I don't get any money, okay, you don't have to pay anything. So a lot of them, and particularly if they're in custody, they don't have to pay these fines. Um, so fines can be converted to jail, um, community labor, which is Caltrans or graffiti removal, if they have some kind of a, a medical issue, then community service, or jail time. Now, so jail time isn't served very much. Um, we have a joke, and now it's probably like you get sentenced now, 120 days jail, and we have a joke, you'll be home before we will in court because they don't do any time. And so if you have a $1,300 fine and you've got a choice of jail and paying the fine and you knew darn well that you do one day in jail, you're gonna get booked and release. You're not gonna pay that fine. So as far as revenue, we're not really getting any revenue from that. Misdemeanor warrants. They, the, the police don't have the, um, the manpower to serve misdemeanor warrants. Not that a lot of the transients and homeless don't have police contacts regularly, so they're going to run them for once and once, and they're going to get them picked up on the warrant that was issued when they failed to appear. But, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I'm told, I'm told this every day by, by the LAPD that I work with, um, they just don't have the resources to go serving, let alone right. to, to, to arrest somebody on the misdemeanor warrant, uh, except on very special cases of people that we, you know, have a lot of, a lot of them that we know about, and you work closely with a lot of them. As far as mental illness and things like that, um, when somebody's in custody, it's it's up to the, um, the their defense attorney to declare a doubt or to say, um, you know, I think my 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 guy needs some, you know, maybe has some severe mental issues. Often it's the homeless people, often it's the transit people, and they are sent to a completely different court, Department 95 downtown for, um, or it's not downtown, I don't remember quite where it is, but Office for, 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 yeah, right, right, yeah. for evaluation and things yeah. like that. Sometimes, um, uh, so, so that can take a long time to get them back into court when they're declared maybe competent, maybe they've got, been put on some, some medication, uh, because oftentimes transients and homeless um, either can't afford their medication, should be on it, don't take it, trade it for food, who knows you know, what they do with things like that. But, so once they get on the medication again, then they can be uh, prosecuted. Um, let's see, I wanted to, I think those were the, yeah, I think those were the things I wanted to mention. Okay. Although I did have something, I, I was dealing with, I, I was in court today dealing with a, um, speed racing case. And uh, the defense attorney came in, and I learned something today that I, I, I had never heard before. Um, he said, you know what, I have a jurisdiction. He just told me, by the way, I know how to solve this. We know how to, we know how to solve this. I said, well, what are you talking about? How can you do that? He said, you wet down the streets, they stop. They get no traction. They don't, it's no fun. They don't want to no do it. No kidding. And I'm like, no, no, no. I said, you got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah, went down the, I said, yeah, but we don't know where they're going to be necessarily unless we really monitor social media, you know, because sometimes they tell us where they're going to be. I mean, we know their favorite places, but we don't always know. And he said, no, nope, you know, you just pick a few places, you do it. I said, okay. And then I had a question for you all. I also learned that there was something that they spray on the street from something that looks like a, um, you know, like a pesticide sprayer mm -hmm. that help that that either gives them more traction or does something. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? No. Because I don't know what that is. 
Okay, who so does the spring? The, 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 the speed racers. racers. Okay, it's, it's, it's some probably what they use on the track. You know, this is where they go with the. Uh, they do the speed racing uh -huh. um, on, the, on the track of uh, the speedways. So they use it so that they have traction. Okay, make it maybe so, so they're doing it on our streets. So one of our prosecutors in, um, in the regular criminal branch, not the NPP <coughs> branch, um, was going to explore uh, something like maybe it's um, causing damage to the road and maybe we can go on a vandalism route. She didn't, she didn't know what the substance was either, but she was um, thinking about like what other thing we can do, or if it's a hazardous material. Right. Maybe it's a hazardous material. Exactly. Exactly. Something like that. Maybe you have to have a permit, just, you know, something like that. So she didn't know what it was. And then also, this is um, um, Tia. Yes. And so then she said there's another um, jurisdiction that has been putting in, not speed bumps, because we all know they love the flyover, you know, speed bumps. But um, little dots in patterns, which of course the People like you and I drive a devil hate it, but it, they they stay away from the area because they can't get any. It's it's um asymmetrical asymmetrical yeah. 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 with it outside of the article that I, I read, but it appeared that the individual had been contacted 12, 13 years pre prior, 2006 I think was the time, 12 years earlier, and that uh, this last time the kids would come to the store, the Dollar Tree, or is it Dollar Tree? Uh -huh. Something? Yeah. Dollar Tree on, um, on Winnox. Um, and so it happened again, and I, they were able to get information from the boys. Um, and then file the case against this individual. I'm not sure where it's going to go. I, I'm following it. Um, I'll probably take a, uh, a reach out. I'll reach out to a buddy of mine that works at the DA's office and see where they are with that. Uh, but it wasn't, you know, it, it's more, you know, it's a story for everyone. Please keep your eye on your children. You know, know yep. where they're going and the individuals they're interacting with. Because those kids came freely to and from that store, right? And no one knew when they would go and come. Uh, so, you know, some got to say something if you see it, and I'm hopefully um, this doesn't happen again with this so much. You know. Are you and I, so it's, it's a small community, we usually know everybody wants to know. Is, is there anything in terms of communication with the community that you could use our help with? In terms of, I mean, Did you see something you, like that? I, well, no, 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 I, mean, I would imagine, though, that there's um, going to be an effort underway to identify potential other victims that have come Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. So if there's anything that we can do in terms of communicating, getting things out to the community, we would like to help with that. Definitely. So, so if there's, you know, uh, officers uh, within the Mission Division or Valley Bureau find that this may have happened more than that these few times, you know, they'll give a press release and we'll pass it out to okay. for more individuals who may think, or who think that they may have been, have children that may have been uh, put victimized by this guy. And they they put a press release out. Yeah. Yeah. They put his picture up there, so. Yes, the job is. And the store. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and is there anything else kind of going Versus. on in the community we should know about? Anything we can help yeah, you with? Yeah, give it up. Um, <laughs> give it up. No, so far, it's yeah. been pretty good. Uh, um, we're working. I have to tell you, it's, it, there's been improvement over the last year, and it continues to be improvement. So, you guys are doing a, a, as diligent a job as I've seen from the community. So, I have to commend you for that. And so, it keeps us working. Keep us working hard, and at the same time, you know, it gives us sort of a, uh, a rapport with you so we can discuss what the issues are. And, you, know, you give us more information, and we work more effectively. So, thank you. Okay. First of all, yeah, climate change is a wonderful thing. <laughs> and it's hot in some no, 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 I'm talking about a different kind of climate and change. Fireworks, and that's why fireworks should be treated seriously here because of the yeah. fire no, So we don't care what they do in other Yeah, so yeah, but no, but climate change, it, it, you know, years ago we used to have cruising problems in, in, in uh, Foothill, when it was Foothill, and, and Somar, Laurel Canyon, San Fernando Road, Rinaldi, and Somar's historically been famous for huge parties because of our large lots. And, and the LAPD would declare victory on both of those uh, every October or so. And I would say, excuse me, it's, you know, 50 degrees, raining, and windy. 
okay? And, and cruising has ceased to become a problem. It's not shocking. And the loud parties aren't happening. Wow. But, um, so the rain, the, the wetting down is an interesting it, it, idea. It's like if, they know, if we know that there's a, we know a few of the main places that they do yeah. down here. And we usually know some of the nights they like to do it. So, hey, practically take a water truck and wet it down. My, my, we, if we, we can narrow it down to some time. I can't. We, we happen to have about a dozen <laughs> water trucks. We have a large oh, number yeah, of, of water We have a large number of We have a large number of water trucks right here in Solmar. But my, my yeah, last question is, really, do you think if the LAMCs were modified, after what we hear about what, you know, the realities of what happens in court with fines and so forth, is there anything that, you know, the, the, the city council can do? Who we, we're advisory to an advisory board, the Solar Neighborhood Council, which is advisory to our council member. <laughs> is there anything that we could ask for that would truly make a difference? Could we ask, for example, for a mandatory 300 hours of community service or, or something. Is there something that we could do where, you know, they can't say, I don't have the time, sorry. Um, you know, like they say, I don't have the money. Um, is there, do, do you think there's anything that, that we could ask for? That you could actually, that, that's probably a really creative thing to ask for, you know, the community service mm -hmm. is part of the punishment with regards to the LAMC section. So, Go ahead. That, Any other true. ideas? I mean, uh, uh, otherwise... Like mandatory, I'll tell you this. The mandatory <coughs> fines, the attorneys work around that as best as they can. Um, and, and the court's going to give the people as much leeway as they can in those situations. You know, Christina told pretty accurate with regards to what she was saying. If you go there, if you're a transient or you're a person that has little means and you go to a court and the court says, I reduce your fine by half. You know, or you can serve it off. You serve another day in jail, which... Like we said, the overcrowding means you serve. Right, right. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised every day that people show up at Graffiti Busters to serve community service because, you know, they're probably got a choice of 80 hours or, what, five days in jail, which translates into literally being processed in and out. They will never see a jail cell, I don't think. But they and don't want to take the risk. <laughs> but, but to me, it's shocking that they don't take that chance because... The, 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 the trade-off, I mean, 90 days in jail is, is in and out. So why would you go and do three weeks of community service? I, I'm, because they love taking out for feet. They, they like, they, <laughs> they, it, it helps the community. So, all right, so creative increased penalties, but creative is the key because just raising the fine is... Yeah, give us some community service in the community. Okay. We can do, and we community can work on this. We do have a project. Community as labor as is Caltrans graffiti removal. You don't want them you to use that term, community, community labor. labor. It's Caltrans or graffiti removal. Right, hard labor, they call yeah. it. Yeah, community service is much less. Yes. Right, okay. right. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I've heard that directly from judges where somebody got transitioned Sorry. from graffiti to handing out basketballs at the gym. Right. And the judge service? says, no, that's fine. You can do that, but I got a different number of hours for that. <laughs> yes, you do. You have to do more hours. <laughs> You gotta pay for it. Too. Right. All right. Or you have to pay for it. Yeah, so. but also, that's not free. Every time you go out and have to do community labor, you, you have to pay for it. So, yep. where I was, um, so it's not $100 a day on the university bus. No. You would not. But some places I've seen that they charge that. Wow. Okay. I'll, I'll look into that, but I know it, last, last I heard, it was about 50 bucks to sign up, and it's a processing and insurance fee. Yeah, it does much more. Yeah, it, it's just paperwork and insurance. But it's called community labor. Well, well, yeah, community service and community labor are two different things. Generally, we, we do a fine or a graffiti removal or Caltrans. And unless they have a medical issue, um, then they can, the court can convert it to community service. An eight-hour Caltrans graffiti removal day is a 10-hour community service day. So not that they do 10 hours, but I mean, you don't. Get your you don't get your your day uh, right. you know uh, whatever until so you do ten hours. Is the term community labor or service? No, community it's labor different. is the work. Yeah. Community service is not Caltrans or graffiti. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Anything else for Alvin? I just had a, a comment on, on this community labor. You were talking about um, the one uh, transients that had been served 
warrant and so forth and could work it off by working in shelters yes. and different services. I guess that would be a service. Um, what about adding to that uh, working for a structured working for uh, public works to clean up the streets? Cleaning up some of the, okay. some of these areas. So the HARP program is so, something different. Um, usually okay. that's done in a, in a, in a um, shelter type well, setting. Well, well, but but the, what we're talking yeah, about is like working to the public, public works, works that would be like on a thing. list that yeah. would be as part of a, a criminal file. Yeah. So it would be something that is. So but you have to you have to co we have to coordinate with that, and that's a city resource. Sure. It's, it's, you know, it, it, you get and, that. and and also. Um, uh, they have to get there very, very early in the morning for uh -huh. community labor, and many of these people don't have transportation. Right, to go so they, they can't even get there. All right, last call for Alvin. <laughs> okay, One, two, I think we're good. And you're more than welcome to stay. We're going to cover. Um, a few other uh, actually, issues. Yeah, the door is locked after you. Can oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You heard that click? Cinderella. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. I was remiss earlier. I want to go back just for a moment, uh, back to item number four, um, to just formally acknowledge that Kirk Cabrera, Cabrera Miller, who used to sit on the committee, he actually resigned after the last meeting. Um, so that's why we've gone down in size um, from the committee as we were last month. So we've got um, two SNC board members who have expressed an interest in joining the committee. Um, it's just a personal preference of mine that we keep the committee a little bit unbalanced in the favor of having more stakeholders or community members on the committee than board members. Um, and my only rationale with that is that we have to, anything that we do in committee needs to go to the board ultimately anyway. So um, I just like the, the idea of having more stakeholder involvement on the committee. So all that being said, if you are interested, if you're a community member and you are interested in joining the committee, um, you can send me an email, call me, uh, what have you, and um, you know, then we would potentially increase the committee, but we would need one board member and one stakeholder. Okay. So with that, um, really exciting part of the meeting, minutes approval. <laughs> <laughs> Item number seven, and these will be quick. Um, discussion of possible action to approve the draft minutes of the June 14th Public Safety Committee meeting. I move that we approve them. I second. Any discussion? All of those in favor? Abstain. Aye. Okay. And Bonnie abstains, so we've got three, zero, one. Okay, motion passes. Item number eight, discussion of possible action to approve the draft minutes of the July 12th Special uh, Public Safety Committee meeting. I moved over. Okay, Tom. I'll second. Any discussion? Yes, Bonnie. Page two, paragraph, first paragraph, go down. Gosh, is, is that the nine, one that I sent you the two corrections on? Nine sentence, nine down, it says, and to avoid costly from. Something's missing. To avoid and to avoid costly from is the next word. So something's missing. There. So Tom, would you like to amend your motion to include yes. some corrections? Yes, to include some corrections because I, I thought I figured you already put them in since I sent it to you yesterday or today. <laughs> nah, whatever. Yeah. Um, this is uh, on the 12th, paragraph four, uh, second line. Bonnie expressed expressed. Well, we know Bonnie expressed very strongly. <laughs> She didn't do it twice. I didn't do it twice. Um, and then, uh, gosh, the middle of the very long uh, item six, uh, avoid, and to avoid costly from unlawful. I just said that. I mean, costs from. Costs. Yeah. Should be cost to avoid, uh, to avoid costs from. Got it. So with those two changes, I move that it be approved. Second. Oh, 
I had already seconded. Oh, then uh, I'll open it back. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Uh, with my changes. Okay. Unanimous four zero. Uh, item number nine, LAPD mission report, Tom. I don't know if you have anything else. We spent quite a bit. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, uh, Keith Crawford, Senior League Officer Crawford, covered it quite thoroughly. Okay. Um, we're good on that. Okay, great. Item number 10, discussion of possible action regarding ongoing reports of crime and illegal activity at Stetson Ranch Park. Um, this has been sort of a multi layered issue. There's some photos. Um, there are many, many photos, but I chose um, <laughs> a cross section of photos. Um, you know, we, we had uh, back in June, I believe it was, we had a car fire. Um, I, I don't think we ever really got the full story of what's going on, um, what happened with that particular incident, but it was a um, burned out vehicle that was noticed in the morning. So, you know, the um, idea was that it was probably a stolen uh, vehicle that was dumped and, and torched, but I, I don't think we ever got the, um, the story from the LAPD. But there are other, there are other things going on there. Just go back up to the big picture of the sign. Okay, this sign, so Stetson Ranch has um, recently replaced some of their signs to more clearly um, indicate what the park hours are. And so this says sunset till sunrise, and I wish Anne Marie was here. Um, you know, it's, would you call this sunset um, outside what we're experiencing now? I think, I think it's, it's a matter of perception. Um, and maybe we would be better served by having hours posted or some kind of more clear direction. Because I'll tell you what happened. Um, we know that an individual had parked his truck. Go to the other truck picture if you could. There's another. An individual accessed, well, I'm sorry, Tom, go back up one. So this is the sign when you, when you go to enter the park, there's that little sign. And instead of it being at the level that a driver would normally look at yeah, on the driver's the side, it's yeah. way over on the other side, and it's posted up. Um, so this individual apparently went into the park later in the day, and when he went to leave, the park was closed, and he could not get out. And so he had no other choice, he believed, but to leave his vehicle, wait for it, so his vehicle was completely trashed overnight. He goes to retrieve it the next morning, and it's just, um, you know, it was not good. So this is just, again, representative of some of the things that are going on there. We've got a lot of graffiti issues. We've got vandalism, all kinds of stuff going on in there. Um, not to mention, unfortunately, a lot of environmental damage that has been done to the park. Um, you know, again, unfortunately, by individuals who are using the park and its grounds for, for living. Um, the restroom, <laughs> the restroom for the park is actually not on the park grounds when they built the rest, the restroom. They built it on someone else's property. So it's actually fenced off. So the park actually has porta potties. So that restroom is not on the park grounds. <laughs> That's what I understand. So um, and this is just a, a picture of, you know, this is, this park, I mean, it's a historic place. And Linda knows this with, you know, this property being part of this old Stetson Ranch. Um, it's just a real shame. And we'd like to work with the council office and see if we can, you know, get this park restored. There's also a picture of the um, vandalized monument for the rim of, what is it, rim of the valley trail? And it's gone. Oh. Marge Feinberg. Marge Feinberg, rim of the valley. So it's just a real shame. There, there are lots more pictures of the, the quality of the arenas just the disrepair of the park in general. Yeah. Um, we know that you know the park rangers 
Captain Torres in particular has spent a lot of time and we so appreciate his presence and they even had the um, mounted patrol out recently, but we've got to do something to save this car. <laughs> For so. those of you that don't know me, uh, my background is actually in wrecking parts, I've been there for almost 11 years. <laughs> yeah, I, everything about wrecking parts, I, I understand it really well and I know who the car I can talk to. So I do have that strength coming in and seeing this already. I, I knew Albert before I even came here already, right. so it's something that we just constantly communicate with. And um, there's definitely stuff that can be done. So, um, with that, I know another concern was um, the Residents Association here brought up that they wanted to get a key to access to that gate. Um, so we're going to work on that so they can have a key to that gate, and that would probably help with some of the cars that get locked in there. I know some officers have that universal key. I think it's a C-180. I used to have it as a staff member. And I remember sometimes I would lock up a park, it was O'Melveny Park, for an event, and I would get a call an hour later, like, someone got stuck, can you come in? Luckily, I lived down the street, so I would go open it up for them. But it's something that definitely happens. And um, when it gets closed, we can definitely, but whoever, I can find out who's closing it currently to make sure they put a little emphasis on looking out who's there already. Did you yeah, guys? I can speak to that. Uh, Oak Ridge Security, the front gate guard here, has for years uh, opened and, and locked yeah. that gate and secured it at uh, designated times. Uh -huh. Last summer, we uh, discontinued doing that because we replaced over a dozen locks <coughs> and chains <coughs> on that because they were being cut. Yeah. So we've been in the process of working with Park and Rec, mm -hmm. and most recently with Captain Tories. So as of my email two days ago, is supposedly ordering uh, a more heavy duty and secure padlock. Yeah. Uh, also suggested for the horse trail uh, and also pedestrian because? trail to the right of that main uh, vehicle access because there's a gate across there as well. And I know in the summertime, of course, you know, the uh, uh, horse uh, equestrians do like to go up there late in the evening because it's cooler. But really, no one should be up there in that park after 10 p.m. Yeah. Uh, summer or winter. So as you can see, yeah, that's it. That's a sign right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. They've actually moved that rock uh -huh. to have access with uh, ATMs, uh, ATVs, up there just uh, a couple weekends ago. Mm -hmm. So Captain well, Torres is also signage. also looking for a larger rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's where we are. So yeah. if you could push that along, I just. Yeah. Uh, did a follow-up email with Captain Torres yesterday, yeah. where he was at with uh, the ordering of that. But it it, it can't just be a heavy-duty locker; it's going to get bolted kind of again. So it needs to be something. And there they are out there. I checked with um, what's the Harbor Freight? Mm -hmm. They have them there. Uh, they're actually bolt cutter-proof padlocks mm -hmm. and chains. They're you know obviously a little more expensive than. Yeah. But when they are installed, uh, Oak Ridge Security will take over that process again because we realize, you know, a park and rec doesn't have the staff to come open that every morning at 6 o'clock and close it at 6 p.m. Yeah. So we will reestablish re that. Yeah, I'll see right there. Okay. Yeah. okay. Two, two comments. One, if it's not a city key, make darn sure that the fire department has copies. Okay. Because yeah, if, you're, if your guards get busy in a brush fire, and don't run out there and unlock it, and they need to get in. It's going to be, it's going to be a drag. The way it worked in the past, uh, Tom, uh, for that for the fire department and also for LAPD or any other public services, yes, they knew that the guard had a lock, but it was also uh, co okay, for good, the good. for the fire department and LAPD. Uh, okay, so the, we're going to do that again. The other thing is, I I live right adjacent to Veterans Park, and Veterans Park also is uh, just like this one, the hours are sunrise to sunset. Yeah. And that can vary 30, 45 minutes depending on who's working and what they got going on after work. Um, you know, if they got something really good going on or there's a game back at the station on TV, dusk comes early. Um, what we, because what, what happens to us is everybody parks outside the park on our, on our streets because they're afraid to park in there because they don't know what time it's going to get locked, just like this gentleman with the truck. So they would park on the streets. We're now the proud owners of the only 
residential restricted parking in the entire council district seven. Uh, PPD, uh, uh, what does it stand for? Permit Parking District 225. It's the only one in all of CD7 because of that issue. And what we had suggested, what I suggested repeatedly, and it, it's kind of a maintenance nightmare, is park closes at, and you have to have a clock, and you know, a big, big clock with big hands, and you drill holes every half hour, and every few months they have to go out there and unbolt the hand and move it because it changes every few months. Um, you know, but at least then you've got, it's going to be 5.30 for now, and then it's going to be 6, and then it's going to be 7, and then it's, you know, sometimes of the year it may be as late as 8.30, other times it could be as early as 5. Yeah. So you almost have to have a changeable sign with a, with a clock on it, yeah. or you need the little slide-in numbers. Or you can do it seasonally. They had, they had, uh, signs posted before on that gate for winter hours ah. and uh, summer hours. So okay. it, was, it was definitely season. Yeah. So they were, actually I think there were two signs posted at the same time <coughs> on there. So if you could figure out if it was winter or if you could figure out if it was summer. But the this, times this, were on there. this seems a little confusing I think to most Yeah, this people. one's yeah, not I, mean, good. I, I know someone asked me what time sunset was. Yeah. I have to look, at, yeah. look it up on my phone. There, there's actually three definitions. There's so there's astronomical, there's uh, nautical, and so forth. <laughs> 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 okay, well, I don't know what time any of that is. Yeah, the, the difference in the locking times being consistent is our guards are here 24 7. So oh, no yeah. one's going anywhere. So it's it's just, you know, a few suggestions, Anne Marie, yeah. that I think, you know, it's 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 sad and troubling to see that the park is it's feeling very neglected. Um, you know, especially if you take the time to hike through the park, um, you'll see all kinds of things that are not great. So and we want we want to keep it nice. Yeah, and they're all, I mean, I'll raise the word this, and I, I talk to them about the things that they can give me updates. Okay, no, but it's just good for now, we can kind of just be sure that, but right. we attended this area, like, we yeah. yeah, but I will be on that. Okay, Ricardo? Yeah, uh, I think that this, I mean, all of these parts over here are part of the county, not the city. So I think that the county is the one we'll have to get in touch with the city of North Science. This is a city. No, yeah, because you come all the way down here too. Because once I remember as an urban council, we tried to open the bathrooms over there on the APM or I mean the arena up there. So yeah, that's a different one. That's county. Oh that's county. Okay. That's county. That's, 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 that's the staging area. That's the all of you staging area. Oh, no, okay. Which has been its own nightmare of late. The county went in there and did some serious cleanup. Real serious work there. Yeah. But that's counting. Okay. Yeah, I just wondered if that was part of the yeah. Thank you, though. And just, and just to add, too, um, Tori's just posted, and we're in the process of helping him repost, uh, the very high fire uh, severity zone signs up there because that, of course, is included uh, in that area. Just to add to the issues. So I'm, I'm actually also going to mention this to our equestrian committee to see if there's some action that they might want to do jointly with public safety because it's really a couple different things. You know, I happen to be open space and recreation rep as well, and we've got the public safety committee, we've got the equestrian committee, and obviously we're an equestrian community, so we just want to see what we can do to help save steps. Yeah. I don't think any action. Um, item number 11, discussion possible action regarding open items of the Public Safety Committee, including a review of the committee's work to date. Um, there's a PDF. There's a, bear with us just one moment. Um, we've tried to post most of what we've done on our website. Um, and this is just kind of a screen grab of the position letters and the community impact statements that we've um, that we've moved through committee and through the SNC board. Um, and a lot of this again is driven by the issues and concerns that have been raised to us by you. Um, and at our town hall meeting we, we said, you know, our agenda, so to speak, for any of our meetings is really going to you know come from what we're hearing from the community. So 
just um, some of the issues that we've taken on, um, trying to advocate for increased safety around the Pacoima Wash. There was a, a young man that fell in and drowned um, uh, some time ago. Um, everything from um, illegal fireworks to street racing, um, several different different issues. A couple of position papers or position letters have gone to the councilwoman. Um, and one is related to fire risk <coughs> related to homeless encampments. Um, request for homeless encampment inspections and enforcements to be cross-jurisdictional in certain high-risk areas. And we called out the very high fire and hazard severity zones. And I think um, also included in that letter was a request for clarification on the task force that was announced by the mayor in January that announced that essentially, you know, that task force was being formed to focus on those high risk areas. But we've not been able to find any contact information. We don't know who's on the task force, how to reach the task force. And we've had many issues where, you know, we, we've had encampments on our hillsides and we've actually had resulting fires from those encampments. And they've, you know, remained for a period of weeks. And um, so we would love to get a response to the letter and also find out about the task force along with the reporting protocols. Yeah, I can totally provide updates for now. We do have a deputy that is in charge of really running a lot of operation of Western Homeless Encampments, and that's for our whole district. He um, communicates very closely with a bunch of agencies, and they can last at also Caltrans, National Forest, all those different jurisdictions, because I know I've already heard in the past there's some homeless encampments over there, and everyone kind of points figures on who's controlling what. He has really close contacts with a lot of those people. So for now, I would say those homeless guys, if you see them anywhere, communicate them to me because I'm directly sending them to him and he gives me those updates on what could be done. Yes. Is he in your office? Yeah, or? he's in your office. His name's Juan Savoyo. Oh, Juan one is that? Yeah. He is happy. Oh, he told me that. Yeah. He's been Can we have one here next time? I knew that. I knew that. Yeah. Can we have he one here next time? Yeah, I think you have one. Yeah, he's like, he's <laughs> on that. So he's all of us have been telling him. Like, so okay. Good. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah. Because it's been kind of this mystery. Yeah, I know. I, I know it, it's weird to talk about all this stuff, but he has a right. person that he can do closely with. Okay. Great. Um, the the uh, green zone's in very high fire hazard area. Yes, I saw that. The It's really hard to put restrictions right now because we also need to be aware that when we restrict one zone, they're going to move it to another one. It's not a matter of just eliminating it. And we need to be ready for what the potential next area would be. And it's not, I mean, it's going to be the same issues. But I understand your reasoning behind being that fire zone. It's something that um, I would need to catch up with what, um, what was being worked on already. But I know that it was on my project list when I came in. Restrictions on San Fernando Road and Flo. So I can't get through it. It's because we, we've done a fair amount of work um, by tracking the council files um, by all the all the council districts. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, oh, <laughs> not that small. Um, all the motions that are being made by the various council districts to post no parking for oversized vehicles. Yeah. And the motions are very similar in nature. They're very sort of vague. They just mention specific streets. And they yeah. cite various public safety concerns, but not in any great detail. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, I mean, it's the opinion of the committee that a very high fire hazard severity zone does present a public safety risk. So we would like to better understand why all the other council districts have been so active um, I mean, we've got one CD, I think they, they've filed more than 40 of these motions. Brazilian. And we haven't seen any come out of Council District 7, so it's just, um, it's a very long list. Yeah, and our concern is that if they're not able to park in the other districts, right. where to come back to right? Of so course. it just exacerbates our problem. Yeah, and along It doesn't solve anything. Of course, yeah, and I totally understand the garden situation and everything like that. Um, we are compensating by even providing more resources for our fire station for things like that. But I know that's the main concern. 
are in New York. And I will try to talk on that with them. I think he said for the study that we did for the station, which is the next item, and as well as other research that we have already worked on. If it's not that we are accompanied by working with these fire stations and getting the resources they need I think, for the potential. But I think I think our, our concern with the vehicle dwelling in the very high fire severity zones is prevention. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Prevention. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Bonnie. Um, could we get a response? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's great and I'll forget something in like two months or something, but could we get a written response? Because this this is just amazing that forty one district can can eliminate or put no parking up and get rid of their green zones and we have Two. I mean, just a response back. Yeah. It would be nice to get a, to yeah. Diane to the committee, and that would be great. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's see what else do we have on here. So, going back to our list, um, like I said, it's on our website. If you go on the uh, Silver Neighborhood Council website, click committees, public safety, and then you can kind of scroll down and see what we've been up to. Um, we generally try to pick at least one or two items to cover um, in detail every month, and then we kind of, you know, try to keep tabs on things as we as we go along. Um, next item, twelve, and Anne Marie will be up again on this yeah. discussion and possible <laughs> action regarding CD7 allocating funding to begin a study and to process and process to secure a fire station in Silmar and other items related to local LAFD resources. So I had asked Anne-Marie to explain, um, because I think the councilwoman has, um, you know, announced that she got some yeah, funding, so she allocated, Yeah, she allocated 200000 um, for the study. What that um, entails is pretty much, you know, the next step now is hiring a consultant, and they will help in terms of finding a location and also identifying, I mean, identifying a site, but also the design. It's the first step in everything to the process of getting one, and it's probably the hardest one. And we really want to ensure that it's done properly, given that I know a lot of people have heard about the past fire station when um, they were trying to open fire station 31 a few years back. Mm -hmm. What the problem was, unfortunately, with that was that the parcel wasn't um, like the right to place to build the fire station. So, I mean, we all learned from our mistakes, and now we really don't want to make that mistake yet. So, we want to take the time to invest in this um, study, and it will ensure that, you know, we get the spot, and then the next step will really be to start the process from there. And we're starting it off early, which I think is really good. So, um, I will give the updates as we go in terms of when we get a consultant, because that's the next step, and then once we get that, and we start getting establishing dates, a timeline, and I will come back. Do we have them go check out Hubbard and Wheeler? It's <laughs> 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 a nice three day I'm on that one. On the corner. <laughs> and uh, I also wanted to provide a little extra um, good news, which was uh, we resurfaced the All of You uh, Party Spot pad at All of You Hospital. Um, yeah. it, it, it was really bad <laughs> and it needed some help, and LAFD reached out to us. So we resurfaced it working with Grove Street Services, so that's adding more resources to our fire station. Um, we, we, if you, Wait, you know, what did you research? Oh, the okay. Kelly's Kelly 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 Yeah, it's like the size of a football field. It's pretty huge, so it's already done. And so they couldn't use it before it was so bad? No, yeah. It was bad. Yeah, yeah okay, so we're, we're happy to get that done. It's already done. What did they the service it with? Uh, asphalt? Yeah, just black. Yeah, asphalt. Asphalt. Do we have a commitment from the county of long-term use? I, I, I hope we I mean, I know we use it a, a, a lot, so that's why they asked us personally to, you know, come on and we serve it for them. Yeah. The Is this the health pad be immediately behind the hospital? Or? No, this would be the one where old floor of two was up on the hill. Yeah, it's up yeah, on the hill. You kind of have to go up, you have to open the gate and go up the road. Well, if you go, if you drive into Wilson Canyon off of all of you drive, you drive right past it, it's on your left. Or you can go up from the new power plant back here. Um, but that's county land that was slated. At one time, they were gonna build the police academy there. They were gonna sell it to the city and build the police academy there. And we told them, thank you, but no thank you. Um, but that's county land that's in their master plan. It's not a hell spot. 
So <laughs> I hope we didn't put too much money in it. It's heavily used uh, in all fires and immediately oh, yeah. because yeah. they bring the helicopters in and load with uh, their water. Sure, the there's there's a good hydrant up there and there's a very good water source up there and that's very rare. And that's one of the things, this was years ago when the LAPD was looking to put their, they wanted to put their Davis training facility plus the whole, they wanted to move their whole thing up there. And including the, the athletic field for, for their graduations and everything. And I asked them, if you're going to build this giant field, can you put three hydrants there so it can serve the community as a hell of spot when we have brush fires? They said, oh, no, no, we can't do that. What, what are you thinking? You know, you want us to welcome you, but you won't put three hydrants in? Anyway. So let me, let me uh, take Bonnie, and then I have a question, and we'll go back. Okay. <clears throat> Staying on the same subject. Okay, so a feasibility study. You, you said that you wanted to use the $200,000 for a consultant for finding a site and design. Now, what happens, you find the site, you have the design laid out, and then it just sits there? What? What happens next? Uh, let's see. Because we've always gotten to, we got a site, okay, it's a great site. Yeah. And we got this going, but we don't have staffing. See, that's where we get, we always get, oh, wow, we just lost that one. Or we get to certain levels of, about a fire station. Yeah. So, so what, what happens after we, the consultant brings all this goody information to I their mean, council? From then on, we have to, design, have to figure out the budget and allocate what's going to be the next step in that. So she'll go ahead and, and ask the mayor for the, whatever this study I mean, says? Yeah, I mean, we base it off of the study what we need to build on for the next step and what's required. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we should be expecting a fire station. So my, my understanding is that my understanding is that this will be a bond measure to get the actual funds to construct and staff the station. So even I think the feasibility say correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. that's just to find the location and work on the design. But the actual construction and the staffing requires what? I'm hearing Prop F bond, mm -hmm. and that is still quite a ways off. Yep. So we could still be five years down the road with this station, right. correct? Um, and it's, I'm not sure. I'd have to find a way to put the pen up after that. Okay, but let's we'll hear about that. Yeah. So that would be great if we could do that. Staffing may not be an issue because we'll have self driving fire trucks. Automatronic <laughs> fire fighters. In five years. Well, it's just, no, in 15 or 20. Just want the, the, the progression to keep going. We want the momentum. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, is the land, if we have to purchase the land, is that also part of this? Uh-uh. Is finding it. No, is this is just finding it. Just finding it. No, the bond so, measure, I believe, would be the land acquisition, the yeah. construction, and the staffing, uh, unless I'm missing something. Is, is there any time frames that are built into this? in this measure right now as to when they're supposed to come back to you with these certain, like when the consultant needs to be hired and when they should start providing us with ideas. I love that question. No. I love that question though. Yeah. yeah. We need to have, you know, it's, it's wonderful to have these kind of, you know, commitments and so forth, but if there's no time frames that go along with the minute. Of course, yeah. And I, I agree. Mean, I, that's what I said with um, finding the consultant first and the consultant is really the one that starts kind of setting the pace, which is what I will update you guys with as soon as we do get back to that next level. Because they have a timeline in terms of, okay, how much needs, how much space needs to be looked over. And then if they find the potential sites, now what other aspects can we look at to find a potential plan? Can you, can you update us on that next month, the next meeting is where we are in that process? <laughs> I will update you, yeah. Okay. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it's well, where they are. Even if it's still I'm a here process, for a long time. <laughs> even if it's still a process, it's still a process. You know, with what you know. But you know, these are the questions we're yeah. asking. Right now, okay. it's the first step in the money for the next time we're consulting. We've been here, done that. Where are you from? Yes, uh, through this fire station, um, when Alex Padilla was uh, city council, mm -hmm. uh, they came with the idea of building that, but it's like a, when the real estate, when the house is for sale, you sell the house, somebody come and, 
and sell the house, which is not then. Something like that happened over here. Uh, when Alex Padilla was a city council, they came with the idea to build the uh, fire station over here on the other side of the freeway. Right? Right. Right. But the happen is that that land was already sold, and that's why they create all those buildings over there. So Alex Padilla came with the idea of $1,300,000 uh, to start building that. So the neighborhood council and neighborhood council vote in favor of that. And that money never appeared, and the, neighbor, uh, and the fire station never came up. So another building came up because the land was sold for something else. Now they cannot build the fire station, that little piece of land, that is too small. So now they are using taxpayer money into those donors to get jobs, $200,000, to just come to do the environment of something that they not even have. So that's that's a waste of money and Let play the with Bruce pay for it. That yeah, they, they, they are, and they are paying with they are playing with our intelligence. So we need to stand up and I'm sorry I'm saying that to wake up to so this politician taking advantage of uh, our ass and, and and they never built anything. So I think that this insane those two hundred thousand dollars that they want to do just to find out environment things. So I think that that's not gonna happen, but you know, uh, I'm in favor of that. Because there already has been approved $1,300,000 that I believe that what Monica Rodriguez should be doing is finding the money and take that money and then use it into those environments that they want to do. Not ours, I mean, uh, assisting taxpayers' money into not competing anything. So uh, I believe that. Uh, I don't we, think. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you done? No. Well, I don't think that we can allow that. But you know, because that money is there. Or oh, Alex Padilla, no one can do that. But you know, the money was approved. So and the fire station is not there. Oh yeah. I mean, Silmar has the largest service area out here. We have one fire station. There is obviously, I think, I, mean, I don't know if you guys support another fire station here, but it's pretty, pretty necessary. Yeah. So we, we support it hugely. Uh, I think we that support it, yeah. This has been a significant community yeah. issue, one of the top ones. Of course. For the last three years, we've done all kinds of advocating. We've gone to City Hall. We've been at budget discussions. We've we have home. really yeah. had marches. We've got all it's, uh, And this is really an important step to doing things the right way and the correct way. I think we don't want to mess up and wait another. I gosh, that was for 2006. It's been a while. More than 10 years. Too long. Yeah, too long. And I think, like I said, we allocate the money, and this is going to ensure a piece of land that's ready for it, that's the right parcel for it. And we're doing it the right way, and it's really the first step in keeping the momentum going and creating a fire station that is well deserved. And I don't think it's a waste of money. <laughs> I don't think that's a way to look at it. And going with a consultant is it ensures that we're going to find the right line and it's going to start the process. It's not a waste. It's an investment. Long term. All I can say to the, the collective group is that this discussion tonight, I heard. 38 and 40 years ago. It was exactly the same conversation points. Yes, yes. And here we are. With the same still same thing. Yeah. Yes. I, I have an expression, but I don't yeah. want to be recorded. And I will beep it out, John. <laughs> it's live. Of course. I have a question. It was my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but the land that was. Uh, Allocated for the fire station 31. Yeah, that you're now whoever deemed is not the correct location for whatever mm -hmm. reasons. Yeah. Uh, it was my understanding that that land was deeded yes. uh, for that mm -hmm. purpose, and so now what happens to that land? I mean, who who was that deeded to the city? Was it was it deeded to whom was it deeded? And if it was deeded to the city or to Silmar, uh, are you going to sell that land and use that 
uh, proceeds towards know, uh, the fire station uh, process? I, I can't answer that question. Okay, can you find out? Yeah. Because if it's land deeded yeah. to the city, is it just going to sit there? Or is that land profitable enough to yeah. sell and use those monies yeah. for the purpose that it was originally deeded for? Yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. Just so you know, that land was given to you by the, given to the city, so to speak, mm -hmm. by the developer. That's right. Yeah. Right. right. So right. it was free to the city. Yeah. So whatever they do with that, they better put that money right back into the fire station. Or frankly, I'm going to be honest, there's going to be hell of it. Because all of us in Legends are paying three, $30 million in um, the Melrose, of which at least $3 million, a minimum of $3 million is allocated for that project. So not only did you get the land deeded to you by the developer, which was Tom Clark at the time, <coughs> uh, way back way to approximately 2007, and you had the mayor digging, digging a hole in the shovel on the land in order to break this with a whole lot of people around. There was a lot of fans there. So we're going to want to get an accounting of what you did with that land that is part of our development. Oh, you know, perhaps the consultant, you can put that in the package for the consultant <laughs> to historically find yeah. out what happened to the land with the with Tom Parker yeah. development, go back to that and see where all that deed money, where it is. The yeah. Melo, Melo Roos, Melo? Melo Roos. Melo, 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 Melo Roos. I had that part of the whole package presented yeah. to Monica so she's got it all. Because this, there's historians that are sitting all over in this room that can tell you the date, the time, and the plan. I was there for the digging. I can tell you that. Yeah. I was there. And the cumulative Mellon roof on an annual basis for that project is over three hundred thousand a year. It's a lot so of it's a lot of money that's continued to be collected over time for a project that never happened. So. It would be great to um, yeah. find a way to trace that money and make sure that we're getting maximum return yes. on of course. the land so that may not be used for this purpose, but maybe can be re repurposed and sold and applied to the new station. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Great. Did you have a question? Yeah, I just had a thought. You know, so we we don't really don't have a timeline on this, so. You know, I fully recognize that we need to have a separate location because of the size of the community, but would it be feasible as an interim measure to maybe do a little remodeling and expansion of, our, of Station 91 to be able to get an extra engine in there? You know, engine 91 is out almost every day, all day on calls. Is, there, yeah. is it possible to do something there, for the time being at least? I think for the time being, what she did was uh, provide the extra engine for fire station 90, um, 75. 75 for Fire Station 75, and she provided that, which will still go towards um, yeah. Silmar. Yeah. yeah, I know, the 75's got that extra, but I think we need another one here. I know we've got one engine in the fast response, and that's all we've really got. Yeah. And, and two ambulance rigs. But yeah. if you, were, you were out on fire service day, you know how tight that station is. So <coughs> yeah. they're, they're well, that's, why, that's why I'm saying we yes. need to do some expansion or remodeling of that station to make room for it. You know, at least it's on city land, so to speak, you know, at the rec center, we may be able to build some kind of a temporary structure on that area. You yeah, got a temporary one, then get a permanent one. Yeah, well, I'd rather do yeah. something, but, you know. <laughs> That's a problem. But, but try to get, you know, something that we wouldn't have to buy land for, we wouldn't have to do anything other than just put up a quantity hut to put an engine in, you know. Right. Tom. I, it's very frustrating for me because I remember a fire station up on all of the drive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is now a hazmat up. Uh, right across from the apartments, about yeah. the middle of all of the drive between Roxford mm -hmm. and the hospital, the main hospital building. Uh, so it's just, just yeah. I'll call it east of the urgent care facility. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, um, the mental health urgent care. There's a county fire station. It's a county fire station for all of you. Yeah. No, it's not. It, it was. Yeah. It was. And they, 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 um, stuccoed over the doors right, yeah. and turned it into a hazmat office. It is entirely office space. However, when they presented their new uh, master plan for the next 30 years, which shows probably another, it's got to be at least 5,000 people a day sitting at all of you. Huge training, huge educational facility. Okay. Um, which is, by the way, entirely within the city of Los Angeles, for those of you who don't know. 
all of you hospital. The, the boundary is at the back of that facility. Yes, go look at Zemus. Go look at the city's tracking system and wonder why when they had an active shooter, the LAPD was primary on the, on the incident, not the sheriff's department. The LAPD was primary. And that was my big clue. I went, why were you primary? Um, I asked them, when you plan to bring thousands more people a day into this community, are you going to reverse that conversion, turn that back into a fire station, and provide fire and, and emergency medical services for the people you're bringing in? And they said, no, we just call 911, the city comes out. One possibility that I've heard thrown out is rent that space from them, yeah, right put a couple engines from 91 over there, level 91, start over. and start over with a two-story that's and better. Push the property out onto the park. Man, that, that's dodgy because your parks are protected species. They're like oh. they're like oak trees. No, we still own that. We can do it. But no, but if you but it. if you but if you can move your fire station up here temporarily, you know, uh, then you can reconstruct that thing from the ground up. Yeah. But it, it, to me, it's unconscionable for the county to present a plan that has thousands and thousands of people on this land. And they're not going to build any fire protection, or you know. And I, you know, I, I can tell you because I've, I've heard stories from nurses. If you fall out of the window of a of a hospital, if you fall out the third floor window, which I've heard a story. Do you know what they do when you hit the ground? They dial nine one one because they aren't licensed to practice medicine on that sidewalk, so they call nine one one and have the paramedics come scrape you up and bring you around to the ER. We learned all kinds of stuff. I just want to be mindful of the time. We'll take one more question on this topic and then we're going to have to move on, which, you know, the next topic, of course, is about fire stations. <laughs> but, but let's just take one more um, from John and then we'll move on. That fire station that Tom is referring to it sits on the county property. Yes. And there'd be the involvement of getting a deed back from the county or a working relationship in order to use that that uh, property. It's not like the city already has access to it. It's yeah. a county entity. You know that big long metal Quonset hut that you see from the 210 freeway? Do you know yeah. what that was there for? The Israeli military was training dogs in there. Right. Yeah, but in 1969 it was a hospital. Uh, yes, it was. A friend of mine was in there. Uh, she was there six months and she had triple bypass. Not in that, not in the building I'm talking about. Well, there were Quonset huts. Yeah, and she yeah not in the building I'm talking about. This one was built for the Israeli military. There's no windows, there's doors at each end. Trust me, it was not a hospital. So they can do whatever they want with their land. If they can loan it to the Israeli military for guard dog training, they could probably rent it to the city of Los Angeles. Okay. <laughs> 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 You know, there's no no action for the committee on that, but um, if, if we could get an update from your office, that would be good. Yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. We'll let it find out about the okay. parcel. Well, we have an open items list, so we'll yeah. keep that on there as well. Um, item number 13, this has to do with the council file um, related to additional staffing for our fast response vehicle. Um, fast response vehicle we got originally in October of 2015 um, and it's been pretty much a part-time asset. It runs Tuesday through Friday right now from I believe 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. if I'm not mistaken. So it runs a 40-hour week. Um, it's good to schedule your emergencies during those hours. <laughs> Um, but in addition to that, we also have two ambulances and, of course, the, the, the engine at the station. But um, I believe um, 
Anne Marie, that this motion is essentially asking for the fast response to be staffed full time. It's asking for staffing for the remainder of the fiscal year. Yeah, for the end or for the fast response? Fast, yes. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so what is the likelihood of the budget being amended at this point? Do we have any sort of idea? I mean, we're into the fiscal year now already. Um, so this is just, you know, um, the, the fast response vehicle from, as much as I understand from our staff at 91, has been really, really great for the community. Um, yeah. When the engine's tied up and, um, you know, it can't transport patients, but it's got a pump on there and water and they can, you know, do the initial triage and wait for other resources to arrive and it's been a really good thing for the community. So, glad to see that she's asking to have it funded full time. Um, so, I'm just opening it up to the committee. And it was kind of front and center on fire service to anybody that came by the fire station kind of saw it. Um, you know, parked in, in the driveway. If I'm not mistaken, unless something changed, aren't we planning time and a half to staff it now? With the, with the firefighters that are at 91? Are it's they on, getting overtime? So the way I understand it, it's on, it's on variable staffing, which is overtime, but the way that the city benefits and salaries and all that works, I guess on the fee staffing, the variable staffing, they don't have to include the fringe load for like the benefits and all that stuff, which can be very, very substantial, but they do when they go full time. It's almost so, like when, when civilian companies play with part time. Yeah. They don't have the other overhead. So I think that's why this number is so much larger, um, and that's been probably the struggle to get it full time staffed is they have the benefits and the pension and all that stuff when you when you go full-time staffing but not on variable staffing so but you know the kicker is I, so they've they've done an analysis of the hours that they think we need it most and that's how we've landed up at tuesday through friday from 10 to 8 or whatever the so so is this a good opportunity to do a CIS on this or support this? Well, we could, yeah. I mean, it's a motion. It looks like it's a motion that, that went to the Budget and Finance Committee. There's been no action taken on it. The budget's been approved. So it would. I'm guessing it would have to be an amendment to the current fiscal year's budget in addition. What was the date on this motion? It was May something. It's not on here. Um, I want to say it was mid-May sometime. It's probably a done deal by now. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you ask Franklin if, if this is a done deal or if we could support this? Well, there's been no action on it. I mean, not, it's still up. The file's still up, The right? file's still up. There's been no action. It's been um, sent to committee, but it hasn't been heard in committee. All right, so, so maybe we, we should wait for you. We, or, yeah. But we would still have the opportunity if we wanted to support it with the community. Well, I still move. We, we could, and then move. it just goes onto the file. Maybe there'll be movement yeah. when, when we yeah. put it in there. So when it does go to committee, there will be... Oh, they're, they're ready. Well, yeah. right. And actually, the fact that something gets added to the file might make it go to committee. That's what I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. It'll, it'll move it. it. It'll move it. I move yeah. that we follow CIS in general support of this. I just did that. I said so. <laughs> well, I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay. So, Bonnie first, Tom the second, and move along. Let me see this. Is there anybody, I mean, do you guys think that this is a good idea for us to support something like this? To get more yeah, staffing to support, and entertain the whole station? Sorry? To, to support the fast track? I mean, the, the fast response, the staffing, full time staffing. Considering it's the only band aid we've got, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, I'm just it's asking for you. Well, okay, I, I'd yeah. say that's a yes. Yeah, no yes. yes. It's a passionate yes. Okay, any further discussion with the committee? So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And suggest that Tom and you and I can work on just drafting something. 
How quickly should we have this? When is the next full SNC meeting? End of the month? Two weeks from today. So yeah. you should be able to maybe get it on the agenda for, for that meeting. I'll send a request. Send a request, and that way we'll have it ready. And maybe the SMC will approve it in two weeks. Maybe they'll yep. decide that they don't like it. They'll probably approve it. I don't see why they wouldn't approve it. It's not for us to be concerned with just writing and send. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, and I, I did take the vote, right? Did I take the vote? No. Okay. All those in favor? Yes, you did. I did. I, did. I, did. I said I. I did. I said I. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so. on tape. Great play. Moving on to item 14 uh, discussion of possible action related to community outreach for our committee. Um, SNC website, email blasts, use of social media, etc. How do we engage, increase engagement and participation with our stakeholders? Um, we keep talking about this, <laughs> and I keep hoping that we're going to have some resolution um, or, or some suggestions that are actually workable. And unfortunately, we're still having um, challenges with the website. Um, I think this month has been. A really great step in the right direction. I mean, David Gonzalez has offered to help us tonight with Facebook, and so hopefully we've got at least a few people out in the community that might be interested in what we're doing tonight and um, might raise visibility. And you know, um, for folks that can't come to the meetings, they can check it out later or on their own time. Um, so I think you know we, we still have to kind of figure out. A, what we can do to improve things. Um, there is a free newsletter program that I found that we can send, um, we can send um, basically email blasts out. But do you guys, when you, when you get those like constant contact newsletters from businesses, do you just kind of tune out to those? Because I find that I don't open them all myself when I get them, um, any of those marketing newsletters, things like that. Um, or emails in general. It seems like most people respond to next door. Um, yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Next door. So, okay. I personally look at next door, and the only I the I never go on to box of any kind. I don't go on to Facebook. Excuse me. Uh, twi I don't tweet. I don't do anything. Okay. But I did go back and found legends on the uh, with the lead on on the legends next door. I think if you're using emails, I read all your emails, I follow next door. And I think if you have a wider hit on new, on uh, next door, mm -hmm. the Facebook may work for you too from a business business point of view. Right. But it, on next door, the problem is sometimes that, for instance, in Legends, we can reach out to a certain degree, but we can't get to everybody in the right. cell market. And I can't reach So you. there's a limitation there. Mm -hmm. And there's a limitation. I know that a lot of things I've written, you haven't gotten. I haven't. And boy, I was thinking of you when I wrote something. And, <laughs> you know, well, you know what I mean. On the fire, whole fire station thing. That's been going on now for four or five years. So I don't know what else you can do to encourage people. If they if they participate, you can get their email and they write the email down. Then I think most people are following that. Okay. Okay. So maybe it's working for you know the folks that it needs to work for um you know, yeah because i think we've got to we kind of have the same group generally um, and people who come and who are engaged mm -hmm. um but we're just trying to you know always increase our numbers and you know reach different parts of Silmar, um that sort of thing so um i have a question diane um, kind of naive i don't do facebook either so with this that you're doing tonight, uh, how does it work for feedback back to you? Do people do it on Facebook then, once they receive this? That's a good question. Yeah. I'm David. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> how do we see this? Mr. Ted? I'm sorry? How do we see this? I don't have Facebook. A lot of people don't have Facebook. Uh, so what, what, I'm also simultaneously recording a copy of it. I can always just upload it to YouTube, or if the council has a YouTube account, we just send links out, and it'll be public, and it, it'll always be there. Um, so we can it, put a link on the website. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, how do people respond to that if they see this and they? So they actually, currently, there are actual people responding online now. 
Really? In opposing and, and, and <laughs> making comments and I, you know, up to, you know, people saying put police on Foothill and McClay. Um, it's great to watch, especially because I'm home at ill and cannot attend. Okay. Um, I mean, there's plenty of people uh, interacting right now and, and, and want to see it. Uh, continue, They're but um, fun of us, absolutely. <laughs> you know, all of these, <laughs> all of these seem uh, very good. There's okay. actually no all right. really bad so, comments at all. So that right there tells me that this was really a success because we're at least getting some level of Somebody engagement. We're getting questions and comments, and we'll take those just just as you've given us feedback. We'll we'll go back and we'll take a look at all of those, and um, you know, we'll get working on that. Stuff. All right, I think we've done something there. Okay, good. Thank you, David. <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't think there's much else we can do there. I'm less happy. Did you well, have something? Well, yeah, I, I guess issue by issue, there, there are things that we can do, I think, to, um, to get a little bit better organized around uh, you know, how, how we address issues and who we involve and when we involve the media and that kind of thing. And, and part of that is... is uh, Deciding on what particular issues we're, we want to focus on, if there are any that we feel like uh, we're passionate, particularly passionate about, um, and in utilizing the skills and, and knowledge uh, that's of, of the participants here, and directing that in a focused way and organized way. Um, so there are things that we can do, and I know that the uh, that uh, Vanessa Serrano has recently. Um, shared some tools for for doing that kind of thing, and we might look at at that and how we might leverage um, some of those kinds of approaches to have some successes in that, that way. And, and quite honestly, and sorry to do this, we're going back to the fire station issue for just a moment. But we, you know, that that has been a significant issue in our community. We had this big town hall and. Um, you know, people were really, really interested in that issue, so much so that we had petitions being circulated around town. We had a letter writing campaign, and we, you know, we have hundreds of letters from stakeholders that we delivered to the mayor's office, and I mean, it was like this very engaged issue. Everybody cared about the issue and wanted it solved. Um, I think maybe that's another thing that we could work to do, you know, um, if, if people are really passionate about illegal fireworks or what have you. I think it's probably, it holds more weight. It's one thing for the neighborhood council to send in a letter or post something online, but I would imagine if um, Councilwoman Rodriguez gets 400 letters from her constituents, that might she might give a little bit more weight to that than, I mean, than a letter from we, us. We have every voice voice what we hear about these meetings at the same time. So, and all these things in there are always, I, mean, I don't even tell her, she, she knows. So know that whatever things that you know, communicate the frustration with what they being said. Well, she can go on our Facebook and watch this. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just saying. I'm actually like that. And I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell her. She was aware of the meetings. She came to a bridge to visit this past Saturday, and she met the residents out here in the middle of the meetings. Oh, good. Yeah, she was happy. To yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, last item. We're kind of in a holding pattern. Number 15, discussion of possible action related to our uh, public safety town hall that we had in April. Um, we've been trying to post all of the questions. There are more than 100 that we got from attendees. Responses from our officials, video of the meeting, um, and we've got some, like I said, website challenges right now, but we're hopeful. They, they've given me um, an indication that we can maybe get that sorted out next week. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully um, we'll be able to expand our page. The, the website, as it is, we just have template pages. And we can't make changes ourselves to them, so we're at the mercy of our webmaster. So hopefully that'll happen soon. I, I, I think it's important for people to be aware that we're under some restrictions as to what we can do with social media as far as engaging in back and forth discussion. Uh, you know, the, because we're a government entity in essence under Brown Act, uh, disclosure of, of agendas, etc. 
it's not that simple for for the you know for us to communicate, and and we're severely restricted. The website, and I, I read through some of the documentation. There's a, a huge city document that details how the website has to work. It doesn't say it has to work, but it says <laughs> if it's going to work, this is the requirements it has to meet. Okay, and 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 it, it's rather onerous. And you know, to some degree, I, I feel like the best thing we could do is 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 walk away from the SNC and become a a, a, a community group unburdened by the government requirements because we, we can't move, we've got this huge contract that we can't even talk to people about because we're not the contracting, we're not the customer, the city is. Well hopefully we'll make some headway on that over the next few days. Um, committee member comments, item 16 on anything? Okay, so all I'll say on this one is if you have a particular issue, suggestion, topic, let me know. Um, feel free to do research on whatever that topic is and um, you know, we'll tackle a couple of new things next month. Um, closing remarks, announcements, acknowledgements, adjournment. I really don't have anything other, other than to say thank you for all attending. We appreciate that you're here um, and those of you who are viewing this tonight um, from wherever, thank you. Um, yeah. Bye! <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, we will adjourn this meeting at 8.52. Thanks very much. Okay. Did you turn off Facebook?